everyone. I'm super excited to tell you the car is finally back from Twisted. Uh, it's been up in Yorkshire for a long few months now um, and it finally got delivered back to me uh, yesterday. So this is going to be my first proper driving experience and I can't wait to, to show you around. So it's gone from a 2.2 litre diesel, as I said, uh, which is a fairly small engine, to a 6.2 litre V8, so a lot bigger. And I think Twisted have done an amazing job. It looks like it was designed to fit there, which it's actually a really, really challenging uh, task to do. Um, I even got them to match the engine covers to the body colour, so it ties in really nicely. In my little OCD bit, I got the calipers sprayed for Harmer Gold and I got them to do the LS3 in the same colour. So hopefully you'll appreciate how much it ties in and I'm just out of this world happy how good it looks. Small attention to details, these have changed. These new trendy uh, indicators, which uh, progressively move instead of uh, flicker on. A few other little nerdy bits, which I know the Defenders lovers out there will appreciate. It's now got a twin fan uh, radiator. It was handmade uh, up in Yorkshire out of aluminium. Just because this beast creates so much heat, you need it to cool the engine at slow speeds when you're in traffic in London, wherever you are. New exhaust. This thing creates some fantastic sounds. <laughs> In fact, the first time I heard this car was at Goodwood in 2015 and it was literally spitting flames and it was actually probably too loud. Um, they've supplied it to a lot of customers that have said it's just too loud to live with. So it's actually a little bit, they've made it a little bit quieter, easier to live with for the motorway journeys and stuff. Still makes a great noise, but actually it is more livable. Then we obviously we've gone from a stick uh, manual to um, you know an automatic box. That means we've had to have this whole console made out of aluminium and then nicely upholstered in leather. Um, and it's got uh, a setting at the back where you can then go into sport where you can change it uh, manually with these buttons and then we've also put in a double DIN display so we've had to move these buttons which are here which were originally in the middle to the side and then we've put in this six inch Alpine uh, Apple CarPlay head unit. So you've seen all the work that's been done on the exterior I've shown you briefly what's been done to have to adapt going to an automatic box on the inside but the most important thing is what it sounds and drives like. So I'm going to take it out for a spin and hopefully it sounds and performs just how I wanted it. So we're underway. It's a bit weird being an automatic with this amount of power. Um, I've driven automatic Defenders before but not with this amount of power. They've been V8s, but this has just got such a rasp to it. You have to build it in slowly, because if you just put it down too quickly, it just can't take it. The thing I've learned in the last, you know, 10 miles of driving it, you can't drive it like a Range Rover SVR and just put your foot down and feel the power. You've got to, everything you do, you've got to build it up slowly. Um, and I can tell the, the many miles ahead, it's going to be a lot more fun driving than the, uh, the standard 2.2 litre diesel. Let's hear what it sounds like on kick down. Yeah, that, that pulls. <laughs> Oh, hang on. There's, there's liquid coming out the bottom of the car. Uh, right, yeah, something's dripping. So, some of you have probably realised that the climate has changed a little bit. Uh, the last time we were here was mid-July. It was a stinking hot day, lovely weather. Now we're in an overcast November day. The leaves are falling and it's a lot colder. Uh, the reason for that is when we were filming the first part of the part two of this whole sequence of events of doing up this car, um, we had problems with the fueling system. The fuel pump kept failing. It was an intermittent problem, but then the pump was getting worse and worse. So that leaves one last thing, a naught to 60 test. I feel like a bit of like a kid in a school playground playing top trumps, and it's all about the naught to 60. But let's be honest, when you put a LS3 Corvette engine in a Defender, you want to know what the naught to 60 is compared to the diesel that was in it last time when it was 17 seconds. So let's go see what it can do. I have no idea what this is going to be. I'm going to guess it's around the five or six second mark. 
Um, the only thing we're going to have to do slightly different is we're going to have to do it from a rolling uh, five miles an hour, just because this is still an agriculture vehicle and that should only affect the uh, nought to 60 by a couple of tenths of a second. So here goes, five miles an hour, go. I think we can safe to say that that's a five and a half second nought to 60. Oh, and it sounds so good. That's bloody brilliant. So that's that's over 11 seconds quicker. That's insane, isn't it? That's a that's a big big improvement in performance. I've now got a four by four, um, which can fit four people in it comfortably. It can sit on the motorway at, let's say, a certain speed very comfortably on cruise control. It's got enough power uh, to compete against most SUVs on the market. It sounds better than most. This is my own Defender and I've put my stamp on it. So I'm really, really happy with it. And uh, I think it you know, stands the test of time and the best of British with an American motor in it. <laughs>